in effect, what I've built here is a training board that makes it possible to teach meter reading and schematic reading and circuit analysis and component function uh, first before you throw math into the uh, equation, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, the board is very simple. It has uh, power coming in um, to the top down here. It's coming obviously in through, through the back. Got a, uh, a, um, a box here with uh, uh, two ports, positive and negative. The positive attaches to the positive of the battery. The negative attaches to the positive of the bus uh, to maintain proper polarity. These are brazing rods. And uh, I simply attach them to some brass screws, soldered them in. And these are Radio Shack resistors, uh, 10, 50, and 100. Now, let me, real quick, I don't use any other resistors, OK? 10, 50, and 100. First of all, these look like resistors guys will see, because they're not going to see the little quarter watt, except for maybe a 120 on a CAN bus, and that's it. These look a lot like what they're going to see in the real world, because there are resistors like this that are used for speed control, dimmer switches, and, and the like, ballasts and stuff. The reason I chose 10, 50, and 100 is because of the ratio. And if you get into the math, you remember Ohm's law, uh, the, the voltage drops, and the resistances are proportional. So the 50 ohm resistor would drop the same as this 50 ohm resistor, but it would drop uh, five times more than this 10 ohm resistor. Okay, so you can teach these guys when it gets down to when you get down to the math, you can teach the proportions of it very simply because you'll see them and be able to recognize the two uh, two to one, five to one, um, and ten to one. You'll be able to see those pretty clearly. But the idea is that this exposes the system for voltage readings because you will read voltage across any open circuit in a otherwise complete circuit. So if we attach the voltmeter here, you see that we get a voltage and we got 12.72. Okay? Um, I'm not doing so well with videotaping here and there. 12.72. So now, 12.72 volts, and since I use the volts over ohms equals amps, what I would then do would be to take the meter, and I could read each of these two sections individually, and you only need two segments. You don't need the sheets with the 400 resistors on them. This, this is all you need, because this is a parallel path, and this is a parallel path. You have multiple parallel circuits here, parallel circuits here. But then this is in series with this. So you can teach everything you need to know about parallel and series um, and here. And if you only want to use one side, then you just put a jumper in and uh, you bypass the whole section. At any rate, what you would then do is flip the meter over to ohms and read your resistance. And in this case, the resistance is 35 ohms. OK? Um, Obviously, if I pull things out, my resistance changes. So I can show them a lot of different things. If I pull the 10 out, it's going to go up pretty high to 76. But if I put this 10 back in, obviously, it's going to drop down. So I can write my 35. And then I would take the calculator. And I would do 12.72 divided by 35 equals 0.363. Okay. Always double check. So I should be getting 0.363 amps. And here's the cool thing, 0.363 amps. They've done all the math here right in front of you so you can see it. And then we put the meter back in the switch box here. And we go to amps. We flip the meter to amps. See, they're learning how to use the meter here as well. And we get 0.36. In effect, okay. you can look at this and see what I'm trying to do here, because it creates a, a, a learning experience that's much more hands-on, much more realistic. And it, it gives these guys a chance to, uh, to learn more than just the math and to understand that Ohm's law is more than just a math equation. The way that you put these resistors in, up to you. I used alligator clips and springs. 
you don't even you just wires you know whatever works you could make these things smaller make the board smaller so the resistors would just fit I, the reality is there's a thousand different ways to build this but functionally it works really really well because you have voltage resistance and current instantly and they're learning how to read the meter they're learning what the components are they're learning about the math when you when you're ready for that and they're learning about the usefulness of of uh, of the principle in the real world because it's important for them to know what happens when resistance changes so that's the uh, the other thing you can use this for schematics uh, as well because they can build actual um, OEM circuits the when it comes time to teach the math for the resistance combinations for parallel it gets kind of weird because obviously 1 over x plus 1 over x plus 1 over x all 1 over there's a lot of writing and there's a lot of calculating and there's a lot of adding and there's a lot of time and there's a lot of uh, effort that's really kind of wasted because they don't really understand what that means okay and for those of you who are interested the reason the resistance goes down with the inverse formula is because the bottom of the equation the bottom of the fraction gets bigger okay so if you ever think about it the 1 over one over blah, 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 blah. all those numbers on the bottom make the bottom bigger which makes the total answer smaller that's why the resistance drops At any rate my advice is to use the one over x button the inverse button okay because we tell them that resistance is inversely proportional to our current is inversely proportional to resistance and right here there's a one over x button all right so instead of having to do one over x one over x all they have to do for example if I want to put 100 ohms in parallel with something else, I type in 100 and hit 1 over x, then I hit plus. And let's say I want to put it in parallel with 50. So 50, 1 over x, plus. And then I want to put it in parallel with another 50, 1 over x equals, and then I hit 1 over x again, and I get 20 ohms. Okay? So I would be able to get 20 ohms much faster than if I had to write down all these numbers 1 over x and 1 over x and 1 over x and add and then flip it over and put memory and use memory I'm just gonna be honest guys that's a complete waste of time okay because they learned the formula for R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 right but they've all used calculators in school so instead of using all that inverted math just do R1 1 over x plus R2 1 over x plus R3 1 over x and then it equals and then 1 over x because it doesn't take a lot of effort I think for someone to look at this and realize what it is I'm trying to accomplish um, in effect we're doing all that we can to ignore the math but to teach volts ohms and amps by using the voltmeter the ohm meter the amp meter and building circuits and having them become comfortable up front with seeing these numbers and watching them change when they change things and begin to make these uh, uh, begin to make these correlations between changing resistances and changing amperages, but um, whiteboards are cheap. Wiring is cheap. Brazing rods available at your local welding shop. That he doesn't need to know you're borrowing the brazing rod, but this is incredibly simple to build, and it's incredibly effective at getting guys involved in learning Ohm's law, the concept before they learn Ohm's law the math and um, if you can accomplish that you're going to gain two weeks by eliminating all of that math up front and uh, they're going to end up being a lot more competent and confident uh, at the end of the class and that's what we need out in the field we need guys who understand this concept and can apply it and um, this is a really good way to try and make that happen